Hello friends. In this video, we will study the different static characteristics of an instrument. So let us start with our topic. If we want to analyze the overall performance of an instrument, then we have to know the characteristics of that instrument. So the system characteristics are important to know to see that how the instrument is performing. So it becomes very important to know about the characteristics of an instrument so that we can choose an instrument which is most suited for the particular type of measurement. Now these characteristics of the instruments they are of two types static characteristics and dynamic characteristics. Before starting with these characteristics let us understand the meaning of the two words static and dynamic. Let us take an example. Suppose the master of the home or the owner of the home is sitting on a chair and the worker in the home he is doing or he is uh, doing some work for the master okay so master is giving the commands he is sitting on the chair and giving the commands to the worker or the slave that you have to do this work for me make tea for me or make the dinner for me okay so these are the commands given to it so the worker is continuously doing the work in the home whereas the master it is just sitting on the chair and giving the commands so the position of the master it is constant he is not it is not changing with time he is constantly sitting on the chair so the master is a static object and the worker which is moving here and there first he is preparing the tea then dinner then he is doing some work uh, some other work okay cleaning washing and uh, uh, preparing the food all these works the master is moving here and there so the worker he is acting as a dynamic object because his position is constantly changing with time whereas the master he is acting as a static object because he is continuously sitting over the chair. So we can define that the static objects are those objects which uh, do not change with time, do not vary with time and dynamic objects are those objects which continuously changes with the time. So again coming to the characteristics of the instrument so static characteristics are defined as those characteristics which do not vary with the time okay they are constant whereas dynamic characteristics of an instrument are those characteristics which continuously changes with the time. So in this video we are studying about the static characteristics of the instrument. So let us first define the static characteristics. So static characteristics are the set of criteria which are defined for the instruments which are used to measure the quantities which either vary slowly with time 
or they are almost constant or we can say that they do not vary with time are called the static characteristics okay so you have to keep in mind the important terms like they are slowly varying with time or mostly constant or we can say that they do not vary with time these are the static characteristics now the various static characteristics of an instrument are So these are the different characteristics, static characteristics of an instrument. Accuracy, precision, sensitivity, linearity, reproducibility, repeatability, resolution, threshold, drift, stability, tolerance, range or span, hysteresis and bias. Let us study these static characteristics in detail. First characteristic is accuracy accuracy is defined as It is the degree of closeness with which the instrument reading approaches the true value of the quantity to be measured. So accuracy, let's take an example like if the actual value of the resistance we want to measure, it is 100 ohms. And when we are measuring the values, we are getting like 101, one other user is getting 102, other person is getting 103, 102.4. So how much close the value which we are measuring is to the true value of the means like true value is 100 ohms and what the measurements or the five persons they are doing the measurements and they are getting different values like 100.5 ohms one is getting 101 ohm the other person is getting 98 ohms okay one is getting 100 and uh, 101.3 ohms one is getting and the other person is getting 99.2 ohms okay so these are the five readings now true value is 100 and 100 ohm and the value which is very close to it is 100.5 ohms so this reading is more accurate as compared to other readings okay so accuracy is what it is the degree of closeness how close the value we are getting with the uh, true value of the quantity which we want to measure now this accuracy we can say that it is the conformity to the truth accuracy means conformity to truth so truly the value is 100 ohms so how close or how much close we are getting that value how much confirm we are that this uh, this is the actual value of the quantity that is called the accuracy now accuracy it is of three types we can define the accuracy in three ways first is the point accuracy
when the accuracy is specified at one point of the scale that type of accuracy is called point accuracy suppose that we are measuring the means we are measuring the resistance and the range is from 0 to 100 ohms okay so uh, at every point of the measurement we are defining the accuracy that will be called the point accuracy okay now this point accuracy it does not specify or it does not gives us information about the general accuracy of the system because we are expressing the accuracy at only one point so at that point only accuracy is defined it does not gives us information about the general accuracy of the instrument next type of accuracy is accuracy as percentage of scale range Now when the instrument is it is having a uniform scale and in that uniform scale if we are defining the accuracy as the percentage of the range of the instrument then that type of accuracy is called the accuracy as percentage of scale span okay. okay like let's take an example of a thermometer now thermometer it can measure it is having the range from 0 degree celsius to 500 degree celsius okay so range is what the range of this thermometer is 500 degree celsius okay so we are defining the accuracy like it is plus minus 0.5 percent of the full scale Full scale is what 500 the when the pointer it is uh, pointing towards the maximum uh, value so that maximum value is the 500 degree Celsius so that is the full scale reading so it if it if we are defining the accuracy as plus minus 0.5 percent of full scale means plus minus 0 0.5 by 100 into 500 okay so this is how the accuracy is calculated at every point whenever we want suppose we are getting a reading as 25 degrees celsius so 25 degrees celsius is the actual reading and how much accurate that is we can calculate by using this point plus minus 0.5 percent of 500 degree celsius now when the reading is very high like if the reading is 500 degree celsius then this plus minus 0.5 percent it can be negative Neglected. but if the reading is like 25 degrees celsius then we cannot neglect this much accuracy we have to consider it so this is the accuracy expressed as the percentage of the scale span third type of accuracy is accuracy as percentage of the true value Now this is the best way to express the accuracy because accuracy is what uh, the definition of accuracy we studied that it is the closeness to the true value and here also we are defining it as the percentage of the true value. okay so these are the three ways in which the accuracy can be expressed first is point accuracy second is accuracy as percentage of scale span and third is the accuracy as the percentage of the true value so that was the first static characteristic that we studied which is accuracy second static characteristic is precision
So precision is defined as the measure of the degree to which the successive measurements differ from each other. Suppose that we are measuring the resistance. Now when we are measuring the resistance, let us suppose we take five readings. Okay. So these five readings, if the actual value is like 100 ohms and the five readings which we make are 100.1. 99.8 then 99.7 or we are getting 100.1 or 9 we are getting 100.2 so these are the five readings now if we see these five readings they are not equal to the true value but they are very close to each other okay so this type of readings which we are getting the difference between the successive measurements it is very less so that is called the precision if the difference is very small then we are getting a very high precision and if the difference is very large then we get a low precision so precision is defined as the measure of the degree to which the successive measurements they differ from each other so accuracy is closeness to the true value and precision is what it is the closeness among the successive measurements or we can say that precision is a measure of reproducibility Reproducibility means whenever we are measuring the resistance, how much uh, close we are, close the values are to each other, okay? Your, how the readings, they are reproducing each other, okay? Because every time we are doing the measurement, first we are getting 100.1, then we are getting 100.2 or 100.15. So all the readings are very close to each other, okay? So that means we can say that it is a type of agreement between the values. There is a difference between the accuracy and precision. There is a very common example where we have a target and an arrow. Arrow is uh, placed over the target and then we check that how the values are precise and accurate. So suppose that we are having the same example here. This is our target. Okay. Now the arrow is placed over this target. The target is the center of this disc. Okay. Every time the uh, archer, archer is throwing the arrow on this uh, disc. Okay. And every time the placement is like this. Here. Okay. But it is not placed over the target. So this is not accurate. but it is precise because it will be accurate when the arrow is placed over the center of the disc but it is not placed over the center so it is not accurate precise because all the throw of the arrows they are very close to each other so it will be giving a very high precision so it is the case if we draw a diagram here so it is not accurate so it is the mean value of the measured things and here because all the measurements they are very close to each other but far from the mean value so it is the case of very low accuracy but high precision Now second time when the archer is throwing the arrows, all the arrows are like just one arrow is here, one is here, second is here, third is here, this. All the 
arrows they are uh, very close to the true value but they are not close to each other okay so in this case it is accurate but not precise okay so in this case if we draw the figure here so this is the mean value okay and the readings are very close to the mean value but the difference between the values is very much okay so this is low precision and high accuracy next is the case this is the center of the disc now when the archer is throwing the arrow one arrow is here one is here one here okay so all the points all the arrows they are at a very large distance from each other and also they are not close to the target so in this case precision is also very less and accuracy is also very less so if we draw the figure here so for this this is the mean value of all the measurements so the actual the values are not close to the true value and also they are not close to each other so in this case less precision and less accuracy okay so here we are getting both the precision and accuracy as less fourth case is when this is the center and all the arrows which are uh, thrown by the archer they are very close to each other and at very at the center of the disc so in this case precision is also very high and accuracy is also very high so this uh, broadness of the curve is also very less and also it is very close to the true value so in this case high precision and high accuracy is there so in this way you can understand the difference between the accuracy and precision that accuracy is the closeness with the true value whereas precision is the closeness with the uh, closeness of the values with each other okay now this precision as in the case of accuracy we said that accuracy is expressed in three ways likewise precision is also described by two characteristics one is the conformity and second is the significant figure conformity means like let's take an example to understand it suppose that uh, the observer he is measuring a resistance and the value of that resistance is or resistor is he is getting as true value as 2385692 this is the true value of the resistance now when the observer is measuring the resistance he is constantly getting 2.4 mega ohm okay but actual value is different okay actual value is this but he is getting 2.4 mega ohms because the scale which he is having that scale only shows the 2.4 2.3 2.2 2.1 only these values so he is constantly getting 2.4 but actual value is different so here due to the lack of the scale provided to the observer due to that he is unable to measure the true value so that type of precision is called the conformity okay so error which is created due to the limitation of the scale is called conformity now next we have the significant figures now significant figures means the numbers the number of decimal values available to us now suppose that uh, the value we are getting is 101.234 ohms this is the value of the resistance true value now when we are measuring this value suppose one value we are getting is 
uh, 101.23 second value we are getting is 101.2 third we are getting as 10231 okay so out of these values the value which is having more number of decimal places that will be the more precise value so the number of decimals available after this decimal how many numbers we are getting that is called the significant figures the number of decimal places available to us okay and in the value which we are where we are having more number of significant figures that value is more precise as compared to the other values so these are the two ways in which we can express the precision now if we want to calculate the precision it is mathematically expressed as So precision is defined as P equals to 1 minus uh, absolute calculation of Xn minus Xn bar divided by Xn bar. So here we have to take the absolute value means only the positive value of we have to take here. Xn is the value of the nth measurement. Suppose we are making n measurements. So the value of the nth measurement we are going to place and then we are going to subtract the average value of the set of measured values. Values. Suppose we are having five uh, values, okay, and uh, here first we will take the average of those five values, and suppose we are taking here the third value, so x3 minus the average value we will place here, then divided by the average value, and then we will subtract it from one. So this is the precision. Now next static characteristic is sensitivity. If we define sensitivity of an instrument, we talk about that what is the smallest change in the input that can be measured by the instrument okay the smallest value of the or the smallest change in the input that can be measured by the instrument is called its sensitivity means if we are saying that this instrument is very sensitive means if we are making any small change in the input that instrument can accurately calculate that small change so that uh, instrument is very sensitive So sensitivity, it is denotes the smallest change in the measured variable to which the instrument responds. Now, if we defined it in the form of formulas, then sensitivity is defined as the ratio of changes in the output. So sensitivity is the change in the, it is the ratio of the change in the output to the change in the input. So mathematically, if we write the formula for it, so sensitivity where del q0 it is the smallest change in the output which is divided by the smallest change in the 
input okay so when we are getting the sensitivity as this ratio as very less then we can say that sensitivity is very high of the instrument now uh, when the response of the or we can say the calibration curve of the instrument is linear then the sensitivity is defined as the slope of that calibration curve so we can calculate the sensitivity by calculating the slope of the calibration curve now the sensitivity means the smallest change in the input so it is always like if we are measuring suppose and uh, suppose there are two ammeters and one ammeter it measures it is having the reading in amperes and another ammeter is there which is having the reading in milliamperes so if we are asked that which of these two instrument is more sensitive then we will say that the milliampere ammeter is more sensitive because it can measure the very small changes which are in milli milli values that can be calculated okay so uh, we can say that sensitivity is also related to the smallest unit so the instrument which is having or which is measuring the values in the smallest unit of measurement those instruments will be more sensitive now manufacturers they define the sensitivity as the reciprocal means uh, they define it as the ratio of the change in the input divided by the change in the output so that is called also called the inverse sensitivity or the deflection factor okay ratio of the change in the input and the change in the output that will be the inverse sensitivity or the deflection factor so manufacturers they always define the sensitivity in the term of deflection factor next static characteristic is linearity Linearity is defined as the ability to reproduce the input characteristics symmetrically and linearly. Suppose that uh, we are having an instrument, we are applying an input to it and we are getting an output. If the output values of the instruments, they are very close to the input and they are linearly changing with it. Like whenever we are changing the input, same amount of change is taking place in the output. It means the changes in input and output, they are proportionate to each other so that type of instrument is called a linear instrument whenever we are changing the input the output is also changing with the same amount okay so those instruments they will have a linear characteristics if this is the input and output so if any change is made in the input the output is also changing in the same proportion so we can say that lin linearity it is the relationship between the change in the input and the output So linearity, it is the relationship between the output and the input. Whenever we are making changes in the input, the output is also changing with the same amount because output and input, they are in direct proportion with each other. So as I have drawn the graph of a linear instrument, so suppose if we define the non-linearity. So this is input, this is the 
output. So linear instrument will have a straight line, straight relationship between the input and the output. Whereas the non-linear instruments, suppose this is the curve which we are getting. So this is the idealized straight line. And this is the actual curve which we are getting. Now the deviation of this actual curve from this idealized straight line, this deviation, it is the maximum deviation. And this deviation is defined as the non-linearity. So if we are measuring the percentage of the non-linearity, it will be the maximum deviation divided by the full scale reading. So this is how we can define the percentage of non-linearity present in the instrument. Next static characteristic is reproducibility. Reproducibility, it is defined as the degree of closeness with which a quantity can be repeatedly measured. Suppose we are measuring the temperature and we are using different methods to measure the temperature and every time we are when we are measuring the temperature of a body so that temperature is coming out to be every time like uh, 50 degrees Celsius we are getting okay so we are using different methods for the measurement of temperature but uh, every time the measurement value is coming out to be very close to 50 degrees Celsius so we can see that the readings are reproducible okay so this reproducibility it is specified in terms of scale readings over a period of time Now next characteristic, next static characteristic is repeatability. Repeatability, it is defined as the variation of the scale readings. Like if we are using uh, every time, we are using the same method and we are uh, getting different results, okay? Like, uh, for the measurement of temperature we are using the thermometer and every time when we are doing the measurement we are getting a different value of the temperature so we can say that the readings they are repeatable okay or we can say that uh, the scale readings they are varying with each other or they are random in nature So reproducibility and repeatability, they are very uh, close to each other. Reproducibility means that we are using different methods but do, uh, for measurement, but all the methods, they are giving the same results. And repeatability means that we are using same method, but every time uh, of measurement, we are getting a different results, okay? Next characteristic is drift. Drift is defined as the gradual shift in the scale of the instrument when the input is not changing, okay? So if we write the definition, it is the gradual shift
means when we are doing the measurement through an instrument the input is same the input is not changing with the time but suddenly the output has changed there is a gradual shift in the output now this drift it can be caused due to environmental factors like due to the stray magnetic and uh, electric fields due to the thermal emfs or due to the changes in the temperature like if suppose um, some uh, temperature changes are taking place and due to that temperature change gradually the output has changed okay so that is called the drift now this drift it can be of three types one is the zonal drift and zero drift and span drift okay so let's define these three types of drift first is the zero drift In the zero drift, the whole calibration of the instrument, it has shifted to some other place. And this type of shifting or is done due to the slippage or due to the movement of the instrument. Like at this time, if we are doing the measurement by keeping the instrument on a table and gradually we are shifting the instrument from one place to another place. So due to that shifting of the instrument, suppose some parts are uh, moved and due to the movement of the those parts the output has suddenly changed so the complete shifting of the output due to the slippage or due to the movement that is called the zero drift So whole calibration it shifts due to slippage or due to the movement or due to the warming up of the electronic circuits like for a long time we are doing the measurement and continuously the electricity is being provided to the instrument. So due to the warming up of the electronic instruments the readings have changed. So that is a type of zero drift. Now if we draw the graph for it suppose this is the input. And this is the output. So if we talk about the normal characteristics, the input and output, they are linearly related with each other. But due to the shifting, the complete calibration has shifted to some other point. So we are getting a different graph. So these are the normal characteristics and these are the characteristics with the zero drift. So complete calibration has shifted to some other position. So the next type of drift is the span drift or the sensitivity drift. Now when we are changing the input to the measuring quantity, now the output of the quantity it is coming out to be like uh, when we are making a small change in the input, the output is changing in some proportion to the input. So the input and output changes they are not linear just like the zero drift. In zero drift the complete calibration has shifted to some other point. Okay. So the uh, relationship between the input and output was still linear but now in the span drift or the sensitivity drift for some span of the instrument like for some range of the instrument the input or the output they are changing in some proportion like if we are changing the input the output is changing like twice of the input it is changing so there is some proportionate change in the output with respect to the input and that type of drift is called the span drift or the sensitivity drift. So 
span if we define a span for an instrument it means the complete range of the instrument suppose the instrument it can measure from 0 to 1000 degree celsius of temperature okay so the span or the range of the instrument will be 1000 degree celsius okay so for the complete range if the output is changing in some proportional manner to the input then we called it a span drift now if we draw the figure for it for the span drift it will be like this is the input and this is the output so when we are changing the input the output is also changing in the same way so if we draw the nominal characteristics of the instrument it will be like this having a linear relationship now when span drift occur the output will change in some proportional manner to the input okay so you can see that the output is increasing with time and this is in the whole range of the instrument so these are the nominal characteristics and this is the span drift characteristics due to span drift now third type of drift is the zonal drift Now in the span drift, the drift has occurred over the complete range of the instrument. Now when the drift occurs only for a small portion of the span of the instrument or range of the instrument, then it is called a zonal drift. Because for a specific zone only, the drift has occurred in the instrument. Now if we draw the graph for it, then it will be like Again these are the nominal characteristics and this is the characteristic due to the span drift also and due to the zero drift also. So zero drift the complete calibration has shifted to some other point and also it is for some specific zone of the instrument only okay. So this was the static characteristic drift. Next static characteristic is resolution. Resolution means that if we are suppose uh, we have an instrument and in that instrument we are applying the input. Now when we are slowly varying the input then also we are not getting any change in the output. Okay like uh, we are having our instrument we are applying the input and getting the output. Okay now when we are changing the input or we are slowly increasing the input if we do not see any change in the output then that is called the resolution means the smallest change in the input for which there is no change in the output that is called the resolution of the instrument. So uh, suppose that we are measuring length of an uh, device okay or length of a scale okay length using a scale. Now in this scale we see that the smallest division is in millimeters. Now suppose we are using an instrument to measure the length of a device okay so uh, this 
smallest division which the instrument can measure is in millimeters okay now in millimeters we have the smallest division is the 1 mm okay if we are saying that the resolution of this instrument is 1 mm means if the uh, input it is changed by 1 mm then only the instrument is going to give some output okay so this is the smallest value or the smallest increment in the input for which there is some change in the output so here i have written that if the input is slowly increased from some arbitrary input value that is suppose if its value is two centimeter okay the value of the input is two centimeter now it will be found that output does not change at all until a certain increment is exceeded now if we are not making a change suppose if the resolution of the instrument is one centimeter okay and suppose we are giving the input as two centimeter now if we are changing the value like if we are making one mm of change in the input so it would be like 2.1 centimeter but we are getting an output there will be no change in the output because the resolution is one centimeter so one centimeter of change has to be made in the input then only there will be a change in the output so that is that increment is called the resolution now the next characteristic of instrument is threshold Threshold means that uh, suppose we are having an instrument, okay, now uh, like uh, two, one block is uh, placed on the floor and a person is moving that block. Now when this person is applying the force to move this block, so this force has to exceed the friction, then only this object is going to move to some other place okay so the movement of the block will occur when the force applied by the man it exceeds the friction between the floor and the block okay so this smallest amount of input that is measurable for which we are getting an output that is called the threshold means the minimum amount of input which you have to apply to get an output is called the threshold the term resolution and threshold they are sometimes misleading Thre uh, resolution is the smallest amount of change in the input but threshold it is the smallest amount of input which you have to apply to the instrument for which you have to get the output So if we draw the figure for the threshold, it will be like, if we draw the relationship, this is the output and this is the input of the instrument. Now the input of the instrument, we are gradually increasing it from zero. So when we are increasing it from zero, we see that we are not getting any output. Suddenly at some point, we start getting the output from the instrument so this minimum amount of input which we have to apply to get an output of the instrument that is called threshold okay so here if the input of the instrument is increased very gradually from zero there will be some minimum value below which no output change can be detected and this minimum value is called the threshold so here in this case of block, the minimum amount of force which the man has to apply to move this block to overcome the friction, that minimum amount of force is called the threshold. Next is static characteristic is stability.
Stability is defined as the ability of the instrument to retain its performance throughout its specified operating life. Means like uh, if we are measuring a length from the instrument, okay, suppose we are using the instrument and that instrument is very accurate, okay, means it is a new instrument, okay. After one month, we are using the same instrument, we are doing the same measurement, we are measuring the length from that instrument. Again, the instrument is get, uh, giving us the accurate results, it is perfect, all its machine parts, they are working very accurately. So, we are saying that throughout its operating life or throughout its specified period lifetime of the instrument, the instrument is giving the perfect results, okay. So, means like uh, if we are giving that the performance of the instrument is good throughout its operating life then we say that the instrument is very stable okay let's see some figures through which it will be clear to you so if we are taking the output suppose that this is the actual value of the measuring quantity what we are measuring so this is suppose f naught and when we are measuring the quantity we are getting the measured value as suppose this is the measured value now this measured value is not equal to the true value of the quantity but when whenever we are measuring this quantity from the instrument we are getting the results which are very close to each other so we can say that the instrument is stable but it is not accurate because when we have defined the accuracy we say that it is the closeness to the true value of the quantity now true value is f naught but the measured value is not equal to the true value but all the values they are very close to each other means consistently the instrument is giving us the same readings or close to the readings okay so the system is stable but it is not accurate Now suppose this time true value is again F0 and F is the measured value. Now you can see that if we are measuring the same quantity again and again by the instrument then all the values which we are getting they are not uh, close to each other some value is low some is high then again low again high they are not close to each other and they are increasing with time so we say that the system is not stable also the system is not accurate because all the values they are not close to the true value Suppose this is F and this is F naught. Okay. True value and all the measured values, they are all very close to each other. And also consistently the values are very uh, close, very similar to each other. So we can say that the system is stable also and this is accurate also. So what we are saying about stability, a system will be stable when the performance of the instrument, it is constant throughout its operating life. Okay, that is stability. Next static characteristic is tolerance. So tolerance is defined as the maximum allowable error in the measurement and this is called the tolerance of the instrument. Suppose that we are measuring uh, 
the length of uh, any ruler okay through an instrument now when we are getting the length of the ruler as suppose 50 mm now in this 50 mm if we define that the tolerance of the instrument is plus minus 0 0.1 mm it means that if we are measuring 50 mm then 49.9 can also be accepted and 50.1 can also be accepted 49.9 is the lowest measurable uh, quantity and 50.1 is the largest maximum uh, largest uh, quantity largest measurable quantity and 50 mm is the standard quantity so 50 mm is our uh, standard value of the quantity and we can allow the instrument to measure or we can allow the error to be in the range from 0.1 mm plus minus so 49.9 to 50.1 they are the allowable values from the instrument so tolerance is defined as the maximum allowable error in the measurement so suppose that uh, we are defining the tolerance this is the range of agreement means the standard value that is 50 mm now around this we have defined a range that the output of our instrument it has to be in this range only okay so this is the lowest range and this is the upper range and around this we have the tolerance so values which are lower than this lowest range they are not allowable so range it is the range of non-agreement and the values which are greater than this upper range they are also not allowed so this is also a range of non-agreement So tolerance, when we define that tolerance, so it is the capacity that can be tolerated or that can be allowed by the user. Okay. So if the user is making an error in the range of the tolerance, then that error can be allowed. Okay. Next characteristic is range or span. Range or span is defined as the maximum and the minimum values of the quantity that can be measured by the instrument. Suppose we are measuring a temperature from the thermometer and we have defined that the range of the thermometer or we are saying that the minimum temperature that can be measured from the thermometer is 0 degree Celsius and maximum temperature that can be measured is 100 degree Celsius. So the range of the instrument or the span of the the thermometer is 0 degrees to 100 degrees Celsius okay so range or span is the minimum and the maximum value of the quantity that can be measured by the instrument So suppose that minimum value that the instrument is measuring is defined as x min and maximum is defined as x max. So range will be equal to x max minus x min maximum value minus the minimum value so again taking the example of thermometer maximum temperature the thermometer can measure is 100 degrees celsius minimum temperature is 0 degree celsius so the range is 100 degree celsius okay suppose that uh, minimum temperature that the uh, thermometer can measure is 200 degree celsius maximum temperature is 500 degree celsius so the range will be 500 minus 200 that is 300 degree 
celsius so that will be the range of the instrument or span of the instrument range will be from 200 to 500 degree celsius next characteristic is called bias bias is defined as the constant error which exists throughout the operation of the instrument let's take an example suppose we are measuring weight from the weighing machine now when no weight is put on the weighing machine then also the weighing machine is giving a reading of 0 0.02 grams so ideally the instrument or the weighing machine it has to give 00, 0 as the reading but it is giving the reading as 0 0.02 means there is a constant error with which exists with the weighing machine and that error is 0.02 grams so whenever we are measuring the weight of any quantity 0.02 grams of weight is added with that weight of that quantity so bias is called the constant error which exists throughout the operation of the instrument As we are saying that the bias is also a type of error so this error can be eliminated through calibration. So how we can calibrate an instrument? We can calibrate it by comparing it with the standard quantity. Suppose we know that the weight of this uh, quantity is 1 kg. So we are going to put that weight on the weighing machine. We are going to calibrate its reading. Means uh, if the suppose that bias is 0 0.02 grams. So when we are measuring the weight of a 1 kilogram of a standard weight, when we put on that weighing machine, it will show us 1.0 okay means 1 kg plus 0 0.02 grams also that will be added so now we are going to uh, check or we are going to uh, change the readings we will make it again 1 kg so that we can say that we have calibrated the instrument and then this error the error in the bias error in the instrument that can be removed a type of bias error is called the zero error Zero error means that uh, when the suppose we are having an instrument which is uh, giving the output in the form of indication of the pointer. Now when the instrument it is not measuring anything then the pointer it has to point towards zero. Now at rest if the pointer is not at zero it is shifted from zero like in the positive side or in the negative side then that error is called the zero error. So zero error is also a type of bias it is uh, the error which exists over the full range of the instrument. Next static characteristic is hysteresis. Hysteresis is defined as the phenomena which shows the effect of the output while loading and unloading. Suppose that this is our input to the instrument and this is the output. So when we are increasing the out input, suppose we are getting the output as like this. Okay, now at this point we are again, when we are increasing the input, the output is also increasing. So when we have, we are decreasing the input, then also we will get the same graph, but we are getting a different graph like this. So this is the graph when the input is increasing, the output is also increasing in this way. Now when we are decreasing the input, the output is not following the same path but it is following some different path so it is the time of loading and this is the time of unloading 
so this type of graph when we are not getting the same curve while loading and unloading that phenomena is called hysteresis now this hysteresis it occurs in the cases of electrical and magnetic instruments because in the electric and magnetic instrument if uh, suppose if there is any change in the electrical and magnetic field in the instruments due to the changes in the field at the time of loading and unloading this hysteresis phenomena is occurring okay so in this video we studied about the various types of static characteristics which are present in the instrument we studied the characteristics like accuracy precision bias hysteresis tolerance range resolution threshold reproducibility repeatability drift so all these static characteristics were explained in this video so i hope that this topic is clear to you thank you